Hey everybody, Jay Krista. This is Say I Do Forever, and this is our Book Friday with Book Friday. Men are like waffles, women are like spaghetti, and this is parenting. Parenting 101, and, or good luck. No. And, <laughs> so Bill and Pam were telling a lot of stories about, well, one is an example of her son using the sprinkler heads as golf uh, tees and hitting it with a baseball bat. <laughs> But we've got our stories that we're going to come at you with, and it's pretty amusing. So Yeah. So, children, our children do not watch this channel, I don't think. I don't think um, so. But someday, if we're gone, yeah, they will get a kick out of this video. They will get so a kick out of this So, we're doing this for your future. That's, that's right. <laughs> so, you guys can remember these stories. That's right. Go so, ahead. we just thought uh, we would do some, some of the... We would dish the dish on our children. Dish the dish. Yeah, and That's talk true. about our parenting styles. So let's start off with Cynthia. Cynthia was in elementary school. Yeah, okay, so this story that we were thinking of that just cracks us up every time. It's funny now, it wasn't funny then. Yeah. But it was Joshua's birthday party. I don't remember what year. He was in elementary, she's about a year ahead of him. And, um, and so all of his friends are over. There's a lot of chaos going on because some of her friends are over. Yeah. And we're trying to do the birthday party. She decides that she's going to go out to the chicken coop and pigeon coop because yeah. um, her dad and her did a lot. And so did the other the boys. But mainly she was really interested in the pigeons, the pigeons yeah. and the chickens. And then we got her chicken. She got a little uh, baby chick. So she was, this chick just loved her. She would go out to talk about to the pigeons, and he would just hop around like a little chick, following her everywhere she went. Yep. And she was trying to show her friends the birds. Well, she turned around because he was following, following, following her, and she stepped backwards and she stepped on him. <laughs> and here tell we him, <laughs> tell him about his eye. <laughs> so here we are in the middle of Joshua's kind of birthday party. And she runs into the house with a chick, a little baby chick in her hand, and she's like, "Mommy, stop on at me! What are we gonna do with Jimmy?" You know, and she was just bawling. And I'm telling you, this chicken had one eye popping out. It was just like, because <laughs> like his eye had popped out when he was stepped on. It was horrible. It's funny now. It was not funny then. It wasn't funny at the time. We thought the chick was going to die. Yeah, but it, didn't. it pretty much looked like it was going to die. You just told the the end of the story. But you keep going with it. <laughs> Tell them all about it. So, so our parenting style is number one. I'm in mode of birthday party. I'm going. Oh my goodness! I don't remember even what you were doing at that point. Like, did you? Well, I started to help her once she was crying like bawling about this baby chick and then we um didn't you get her a little uh, like a shoe, shoe box, box. yeah we cotton. set it up set it up with a shoe box and a little light. towel or whatever and a, a light so it stayed warm and she's sitting there after that she was working on nursing it back to health she had she, a little eyedropper with she would feed it yeah <laughs> so basically um believe it or not this bird, we thought it'd be dead by the end of the day. We thought it'd be dead definitely by the next morning. And this little bird lived, and she brought it back to life and just kept nursing it. It had a little bit of a weird eyeball for a little bit. <laughs> that, was a, that was a funny bird. Oh, my gosh. But here's the funniest, or another funny part about that is this bird, we thought we were getting a chicken of course it turned into a rooster which we were in the city at the time you can't have roosters and you can't have city. roosters in the city so he grew up into be chicka bird grew up to be a rooster and we were worried that we were going to have to get rid of him but what ended up happening is that injury had messed with his voice box so instead of crowing instead of cock a doodle do he'd go eh, eh. he'd go yeah, <laughs> his 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 cockle doodle do was broke. Yeah, it was it was pathetic. <laughs> he couldn't he couldn't do the whole you know typical mm -hmm. rooster crow in the morning. <laughs> so his little injury saved him, and we were able to keep him 
for quite a long time until he actually uh, moved out to a farm eventually. Yeah, then we took him to a farm, yeah. And he went and lived he, on a farm for the rest of The best of his part life. is he went from Chickabird to Roostabird. <laughs> he was... Because we thought Cynthia was going to be able to have a chicken and they were going to have eggs and all this stuff. And when you get them from the supply place you here where we live, it's just they put them all in this bin and you just grab the ones you want and take them home. They don't Let know if they're... Yeah, if they're chickens or roosters. Uh, anyway. So I don't know if we have any pari parenting advice in that situation. Just just be there. Know. Just be there for your kids. <laughs> yeah, because when there's when there's a crisis or a, a devastation moment, yeah. be there for them. Yeah, and this chapter was really good about statistics about the differences between mom and dads and how that each of them are critical. And so it really made me think about how divorce um, makes it so that you're only with the mom or the dad half time. Yeah. And how important it is to children to have both kind of skills or both uh, styles of yeah. parenting. But now yeah. we have to, we've got to tell one on Josh. Well, my favorite one of Josh is, so for, <laughs> for one of his birthdays, I got him a Yamaha TTR 125. And he would, there's a natural preserve, bird preserve behind our home that we lived in. And it was like huge. And so he would ride down the dirt road and, and around it and then come back and he would just like enjoy. So for whatever reason, he decided to go off into the field. Well, as he went off into the field, we're all sitting on our back deck and just watching him ride. You can see him from far and away. And he's like this and all of a sudden he drops. He and he vanishes. Disappeared. And we were like, what just happened? Where did Josh just go? So Andrew starts running out there to go check on him to see what happened. And what had happened is the farmer had a retention basin about eight foot by eight foot by six feet deep. Well, there was, you know, um, weeds and, you know, all the tall grasses and all that stuff. And Josh didn't see it. And he was going along a pretty good clip. And he just went right down into it yeah, and got flipped over the handlebars and he got stuck down in there so we ended up he ended up okay i think he jammed his thumb or or and something his, whole... his handlebars were tweaked and so andrew ran out there and so i got up and i started walking out there i mean i didn't think that he was that hurt you know i just saw that he had disappeared i figured he crashed somewhere out in that field but then we had to all you know get down in there you know two of us get down in there one at the top and pull the dirt bike out and the handlebars are all like this and so i had to straighten those out and it yeah. was just quite the ordeal yeah so how do men and women or moms and dads handle injury or something like that different well with that situation i'm sure you were panicked but i was just like i'm just gonna go walk out there and see if he's okay <laughs> see if he's still alive yeah. <laughs> it's like you know, did he fall and get hurt? Probably. Is he going to live? Probably. Yeah. It was like, I think we take it at different levels. The mom and the dad take it at different levels. Yeah. You, you know, of seriousness. Well, you probably think, well, it's a learning lesson, you know. Oh, it was a learning lesson because yeah. I guarantee you guys he didn't do it again. No. He steered clear of that spot. Well, I'm going to tell a second story on him. Yeah. Because the boy has a problem with all bikes and dirt bikes and everything because he cannot stay on the path even to yeah, this day he he's, likes to adventure he's, off <laughs> he's 30 into the he'll dirt. be 32 this year and we were talking to him this weekend about he wanted to get uh, go dirt bike riding and he said something we said are you going to go on this trail and he goes no because i always get flat tires well the reason he gets flat tires is because he can't stay on the trail. He's always off in the weeds. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna tell always. we're gonna tell a second story on him, even though I I'm dying to tell some on Andrew. Yeah. Um, well, we'll get to Andrew. But it's true. He always has a flat tire anytime we go bike riding. One big event was we decided as a family we were all gonna get in our um, bikes and we were going to ride all the way. Um, to the canyon, which it was quite a ways from where we lived, mm -hmm. and we we're gonna go along the canyon and then all back through some farmlands. And we were doing it, and of course, Joshua, the rest of us are all going along on the trails. 
and on the streets, but where's Joshua? He's up in the dirt. He's up on the... Doing jumps and, <laughs> and just getting crazy all in the dirt and the weeds. Yep. And so he picked up some of those... The little goat head thorns that stick in your tires. Yep. And all of a sudden, oh, we kind of stopped to cross a road or something like that. And I came up behind him. And I'm like, Joshua, your entire back tire is all these thistle thorns like they were big yeah and they if, were big goat heads and of course what is krista stupid enough to do what does she do i go well we need to get those off and i popped one out and went <laughs> and so what does that do <laughs> we are out in the middle of farm country and we have a bike with a flat tire and so Andrew, luckily on his bike, had rear pegs on the back. So Josh had to stand on his <laughs> pegs and hang on to Andrew's shoulders so Andrew could take him back home. And I had to pack Joshua's you... bike with flat tires over my shoulder on my bike while riding my bike. You... <laughs> and that Andrew, or Joshua's bike was heavy, too. Oh, my gosh. So I appreciate what Krista did <laughs> pulling the thorn out of Joshua's tire. Tires. <laughs> Yeah, the back one and the front one. But I have learned now, if you're out riding, um, don't pull those thorns out until you get home. Leave them, leave them in until you get home, because that's sealing the hole. Luckily, my until parents you... uh, lived about halfway. Yeah. For us to get back, we would have yep. never made it. Um, no. Nope. We would have never made it back home. Mm -mm. Uh, but my parents lived. It still was a long, it took us forever and it was exhausting and you had to stop. It was exhausting. I had to carry that stupid bike. <laughs> it was exhausting watching him carry the bike. <laughs> I kept having to stop and switch and go to this arm and then go back to this arm. Oh, uh, anyways. It was quite. And we made it to my parents who then we loaded them all in the pickup truck. Yeah, and, her dad's truck. And then, and then, then brought then them home. Brought them home. But that boy cannot ride his bike on a trail nope. to save his life. Nope. He always likes to jump jumps in the dirt <laughs> and all that stuff. Okay, Andrew, it's your turn. Got to tell which, us. Which one? Oh, do you want to do the, the Yellowstone? Let's, or do you want to do the running away? Well, let's just go with, let's just go with Yellowstone Okay. <laughs> so, if any of you have been to Yellowstone, you know the sulfur smell. And yeah. it's bad. <laughs> it's really bad. And so we're on a family vacation. We are on that family vacation and we are <laughs> driving through where the, the paint pots are at and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And we're going through and it always smells horrible anyway. And so we're going through and it's like, pew, that just oh, so reeks the like kids rotten will all be like, eggs. Oh, it stinks. Oh, it stinks. <laughs> so then what does Andrew do? He was tooting. The entire he's passing way. passing gas in the very back seat, and he's playing it off like it's the paint pots, like it's the sulfur smell. <laughs> so we were smelling them even when we were on the back side of Yellowstone when there are no geysers. Yeah, and then we're like, all right, who's tooting in this car? Because you're knocking us all out. And Andrew starts laughing, and <laughs> Cynthia's like, Andrew, you jerk. <laughs> he was tooting the entire time. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that kid, he's a crack up. Okay, so, um, yeah, I don't know if there's any parenting advice there. Yeah, watch what you feed them. <laughs> Just have a sense of humor. Watch what have you feed your children. Have a sense of humor while raising children. That's right. Um, you have to have a sense of humor. Let's just go right to have, having to have a sense of humor while raising kids. Let's just do another one on Andrew. Yeah. Um, this boy, we adopted Andrew when he was 10, ten years old. And um, he had some struggles and uh, had quite a few things. We landed ourselves in the principal office often. Many times. Often. Many times. <laughs> and, uh, but we love him to pieces. He's such a, a great kid. But yeah. um, he just had some abandonment issues and some things. So anytime life was getting good, he seemed to self-sabotage. Yep. So he was our little runaway. And... Often, if, say, some fun event was happening, he would run away in the middle of it. Yeah. We're not sure why it was whenever everything... 
Everything life was, was good. Really good. Life was good. Everything was good. And then he decides yeah. that he's going to run away for attention. So the one of the first ones is we got our Christmas tree. All, put, got all the Christmas presents out. Um, I was finishing up uh, cooking and everything. The boys decided they're going to go out and um, ride, their bikes. ride their bikes. And Joshua comes in to go to the bathroom. And then he goes back out. And he comes back in and says, did Andrew come back in? I said, no, he's out there riding his bike. No, he's gone. And his bike is gone. And, and here we go. For no, I said, did you fight with him? We, you know, no, we were just doing jumps and having fun. And we were having a blast. And he had run away. And he got almost to the airport, which is out south of it's town. Probably, it's probably five or six miles from where we live. So At least. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's five or six miles. <laughs> He was, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know what he was thinking he'd do once he got to the airport with his bike. I don't know. I don't think he thought it that far ahead. <laughs> but he was He was determined. He was running away. Oh, boy. And uh, one of our friends uh, from the church that we went to at that time, she was uh, driving down the airport road, and she thought, is that Andrew? And she passed him, and then she backed up, and then she got out of the truck, and she goes, Andrew? And then he turned around and tried to take off, take off the other way. And she stopped She him. says, Andrew, you better stop right now. Let me, you know. Anyway, she grabbed him and put him in the car, put his bike in the back of her truck. Thank God she had her truck. And then she calls me and says, are you missing a child? <laughs> Thanks for asking. Yes, we are. Yes. We are missing a child. Where did you find him? <laughs> I don't know if the police were there at that point. No, not for that one. Yeah, we not have for that one. We have a that took a lot of patience. Uh, that tried our marriage a lot and different things and the well, way it, we were any, dealing with things. Anytime you you know uh, what is the saying? You upset the apple cart or whatever, whatever the saying is. But mm -hmm. anytime you uh, make waves in your your family life it's it's going to be trying and mm -hmm. it was very trying it was trying on our marriage it was trying on our relationship with Cynthia and Joshua but i mean now we look back at it and it was now they're it, just it, it, funny it is, stories it is what it is yeah so if you are a parent right now and you're in the midst of some of these stories but they're not so funny when you're in the middle of them just know that someday you'll be old like us, sitting back and kind of laughing at some of these That's stories. Right. So just do your best, have some patience and love. Yep. Try to work together as a team. Um, yeah, I want to tell sure. one more runaway story too uh, on Andrew. <laughs> and that was we had moved out um, to a small town outside of um, uh, the where town. Where we live. Yeah, where we live now. And so we were out a little bit more in the country, and they had gone to another junior high. And um, Andrew, unbeknownst to us, in the middle of the night, decided to leave our home and walk on the highway all the way, which is a big, it's kind of like an old it's, country road. It's a country road, but it's heavily traveled. So he decides that he's going to walk to the middle school where he used to attend uh-huh and then when the janitor was there uh, cleaning had propped the door open he slipped in to the uh, to the junior high and then when the ja he hid behind the Pepsi machine and when the janitor left he just decided he was gonna you know like the movies have full reign of the school and roam around Problem is that they have motion detectors at the school, so the the as soon as the janitor set, set it, <laughs> and Andrew started to move around, it was a silent alarm, and he didn't know it was a silent alarm. So here come the county sheriffs. <laughs> they had to contact the janitor. They had the janitor they open went the door. Guns drawn. Guns drawn, and. They got a hold of Andrew, and then Andrew was lying about who he was and where he lived, they and they finally him, got him to yeah, well, they say had him where he lived. At the police department for hours because he refused to tell him what his name was. He kept giving him fake names and fake addresses and everything. So 
it wasn't until like one, two, three o'clock in the morning. Mm, it was about two in the morning. About two in the morning. We don't even know he's gone because we've been sound asleep forever. Well, yeah, the other four of us are asleep. <laughs> <laughs> we hear boom, 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 boom. Yeah. <laughs> you want to talk about startling up out of bed. So, of course, I <coughs> grab my baseball bat mm -hmm. and I open up the door and I look up and there's these two county sheriffs that are probably the size of Shaquille O'Neal and both ripped and they're both standing at the door on our step with Andrew in the middle. And didn't you have a baseball bat? Uh-huh. That's what I just oh, said. okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, and I was coughing. <laughs> so I set that down and then I was like, what happened? What's going on? And then they proceeded to tell me, are you such and such? And they, you know, asked me that. And I'm like, no. And they're like, well, what is your name? I'm like, my name is Jay. And I gave them all of my information and I even showed them my driver's they, license. Well, they wouldn't believe him. Yeah, they wouldn't believe me because Andrew lied to them. So they figured, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Yeah. He must be a hoodlum too. Yeah. <laughs> so they treated you like that. So, <laughs> at first. At first. At first. And so then we had them come in and then we talked to them and we talked to Andrew and and all that and then they understood that we had adopted him and and all that stuff but that was very trying yeah that was frustration yeah that that pushed my patience way beyond mm -hmm. we were time. exhausted at that point mm -hmm. yeah so you might be you know a parent dealing with some of that during junior high high school stuff like that hang on andrew is um an amazing uh, guy now. He's, oh yeah, he outgrew that real fast. <laughs> he outgrew that. He's doing really good. Now. I think what all of our kids. Are I think doing really what good had now. one of the times. You know, we're only telling you two of the runaway stories. There are stories of him hiding in a tree while him and all Jay and all the police were combing the yeah, area. Yeah, one of our one of our ISP off, officer yeah. friends it was helping us try to track him down. And, and then you guys never found him that night. No, but where our friend was parked over by the park. He was in that tree looking down at his patrol car. Yeah. So, so I mean, the stories I go on and on. One of the things that really um, stopped him running away is you had grabbed him one of those times and you just grabbed a hold of him and you said, Listen to me. Yeah. You are part of this family and you're not going anywhere. And no matter what you do wrong, we're not getting rid of you. Yeah, and we still love you. And we still love you. I just flat out looked right in his eyes and I told him, I still love you. So, yeah. I mean that, and then he started crying. And then he gave me a hug and then it was it was a lot better after that. I think kids he need to know that they belong. He was doing it for attention and, he, and then he knew that he didn't have to do that anymore. That if he acted up, we're not gonna just move him to the next mm -hmm. I think he had felt place. that in some of his other homes that if oh, he yeah, misbehaved, he, they were just going to get rid of him. He kept getting passed around, and you can't do that to a child. No. So he Even is still part of this us, family. We didn't matter. kill him. Yeah. We didn't kill him. Mm -mm. And we love him very much. Yeah. He's an amazing adult. <laughs> well, and all three of the kids are doing really well. Yeah. You know? Yeah. All three kids. Well, and speaking of adult, so... Um, our daughter hated camping and hated outdoors. So there's times when we tried to make her go outside. Yep. Um, and she didn't want to go outside at the house. And then there's nope. time we went camping. I know one particular time you were struggling with her because all she wanted to do was hunker in her room and read and do nothing. And it was a beautiful day. Yeah, it was like 65, 75 degrees, something like that. Maybe and even 80. Yeah, and, I, and it was like spring, summertime. And I had had enough, but I told her, I said, you need to come upstairs and you need to go outside. But I don't, she says, but I don't want to go outside. I like reading in my room. And I'm like, well, you need to get some sunshine. You need to get some vitamin D. You need to get some sunshine. And so she threw a fit. And so she goes outside. And what does she do? She sits out in the sunshine. And All she, by herself. Way and, she, and she proceeds to read. <laughs> Away from the family. Yep. <laughs> <She's> no interaction. <laughs> no interaction. But she was getting her vitamin D. Yep. Well, at least I was just happy that she was outside with us. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, and anytime we it's went just one of those things. camping, um, she did not like <clears throat> the outdoors very much. And she couldn't, when we went camping, she liked some of it. 
but she did not like um, the bathrooms <laughs> for sure and she didn't like being dirty and um, you know it's just funny looking back because as you guys might know our daughter is now an archaeologist and she spends a lot of times in the dirt in the dirt out in the middle of nowhere stepping on cow patties or digging through yeah, some jungle just, just everything i mean she's and around using a lot of porta potties she's around snakes and <laughs> snakes and spiders and creepy crawlies and anything else i mean go figure <laughs> she she hated to even when, when she was a little baby you know she's like two years old she hated to even get dirt on her hands and she's like oh <laughs> and now she just gets right in there with the best of them and she does her test pit and she digs down and she finds find stuff and mm -hmm. it's amazing yeah she's talked to us about it when she was in northern idaho they would hike through the mountains and through this farm country and then have to cross over some um fencing like the barbed wire fencing um and then being very careful not to step on something like a snake in some areas it just and then running across some cow friends and stepping in cow patties it's just incredible and then last summer she was in mexico um all in the Mayan temples, and she was talking about the monkeys. It was just her and the monkeys that, that would throw stuff at her. Yeah, go figure. <laughs> go figure. She goes from not uh, wanting to touch dirt to playing in it and digging in it and making a living out yeah. of it. Yeah, you know, so... She's, she's, she's going to get her doctorate here pretty soon, and that just is mind-blowing that that's what it's about. Mm-hmm. And I guess parenting tips in that is let your children explore let them dream let them dream let, let it but then challenge them a little bit um even though she didn't like to go camping we took her camping yeah and also know that your children are going to surprise you mm -hmm. they may do something that you never thought possible just let the let the world be open to them to try new things yeah you know yeah they may just surprise you mm-hmm because all of our kids have surprised us. So. <laughs> well, what are some differences just in our everyday parenting style? We were talking together about, like you said, I don't know if we ever had any sit down, like, how how are you guys doing moments. Yeah, Krista and I were talking about this um, earlier today. And it's like we never really, you know, did the psycho analysis no. garbage uh with our kids as far as so tell me how you're feeling we didn't approach our children like that you know um my questioning them on anything it was just very direct um you okay you know and she would be more fluff make cookies yeah. and we may you know, not have had like formal, that. like, we got to sit down and have this conversation. But we let life happen. Mm -hmm. And I know I was lucky enough to be able to be home um, with them through most of that time until I opened the shop. Right. Uh, the last couple of years they were home. Um, but I would bake cookies every day uh, before they got home from school. So when they walked in the door, they smelled cookies. And they immediately came in and gathered around the kitchen and sat at the bar area, the, the breakfast, breakfast bar, bar area. And um, I just let conversation just happen. They would talk to mm -hmm. each other and me about their day, yep. about this or that, feelings. Um, you know, we'd all help each other problem solve. And then Jay's style was uh, we would, we always, and I would recommend this if you have a family, is have dinner every night at least at together least a, at the dining room table yeah like at, a real family at least four or five times a week yes. try to turn off the tv um we didn't have to worry about smartphones back then yeah there were no you know cell phones and all that kind nowadays of stuff. you probably need to put all the smartphones in a basket set them aside yeah. get your kids to actually interact and talk with you so you know what's going on in their lives and how they're feeling yeah, because that dinner you know. conversation is organic. Um, it will just happen just because you are there and you're asking about their day. Um, and that's your style. You would sit and um, 
and no, I just would ask them, how's it going? How did your day go today? Mm -hmm. You know, what's going on at school? Are you, you know, are you struggling in any of your classes? Are you doing okay? You know, and I'd ask each of them that. Um, and I think that was a, just a way that I did it. Mm -hmm. You know, she would gather around the table of food, mm -hmm. you know, with the cookies and, and the kids feel comfortable talking to mom, you know, when they're munching out on a chocolate chip cookie or a peanut butter cookie mm -hmm. or an oatmeal cookie. And yet, so, even then, I think sometimes they'd share stuff with their dad that they didn't even share with me. Sure. I think that's why it's important to have the, uh, the mom and the dad there 24-7. You know, like a full-time mom and a full-time dad. And I know not everybody has that uh, ability to have that. And then you have to make uh, concessions for that and try to. But if you're married and you're on the brink of divorce, think about the consequences of um, what would happen if your kids only had you half time and only had your spouse half time. Mm -hmm. um, if they need mom and dad full time because we both bring something totally different to the table. You can read in the book, um, they actually have statistics that show um, parents um, the differences between men and women and then ha they've done studies on babies who thrive when the dad's involved or mm -hmm. or when the mom you know different studies on that which were really really important so each of you mm -hmm. bring something totally different it's funny um, because they would often uh, bring up something that they would never speak to me about um, such as um, <laughs> sex <laughs> They never talk to me about that, but at the dinner table, yeah. all of a sudden, their dad would ask them a question that would open up something like, um, you know, and they would all have that discussion um, about sexuality and stuff like that. And I yeah. was just like over there just being quiet. I already had my... Krista cookie. just kept her head down and kept eating her <laughs> meal or whatever. <laughs> she really didn't want to go down that road, but that's okay. Yeah, but Jay's pretty open with it. Well, I was raised by a mother that was very uh, verbal. And yeah. Very, you know, birds and the bees type talk, you know. Yeah. So you were so, okay with it, and that's another thing. It's it not was just more easier for me than you. It's not just men and women differences. <clears throat> it's also personality and how you were raised different. You're both going to bring something different to the table, and right. that is good for your children to have the two differences. They have the nurturing. They have the tough love. They have the balance of the two of you. Yeah. And at the same time, those kind of things can also bring stress to the marriage because you both have a different idea of how you want to raise your child. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes you guys can kind of knock, um, what do you call it, uh, knock heads or mm -hmm. like, you know, hit. Yeah, have that friction. Yeah. And so you need to realize that the differences in your personalities and the differences in your style are good um, but there are some negative points to each of those you know if you're too nurturing you may end up um, making your child not be able to um, cope with anything. cope with the hard things of life if you're too hard and harsh you may scar your child well and they will probably feel defeated if you're always harsh with them Mm -hmm. You know, with our kids growing up, I, I was kind of harsh. I mean, and I'm sure the kids would back me up on that, but I was trying not to be too harsh. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to let your kids feel defeated, you know, before they even get a chance at life, you know, at making their own decisions and things like that. Mm -hmm. So you always want to support them, but, you know, with yeah. reservations. I, I totally agree. I totally agree. Because you can go... And that's why I think the two different personalities and the two different, you know, male-female things kind of balance that out. Yep. And that's, you know, you wonder with all the divorce rates in, um, in our country and worldwide, this is why things are going really bad. If you even look at those statistics in that chapter, chapter 9, um, you see that you just pull out one element like the man's role or the woman's role, the nurturing, or this, or you, if you're too heavy on one side, then they don't get that balance. Right. Right? Mm hmm And I think God's really blessed us with the marriage that we have and with the children we have. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, we've had our struggles with our kids, mm -hmm. but 
um, he seems to have taken care of us mm -hmm. um, during the entire time that we've been married and that we've had our children, mm -hmm. you know, in the home and then as they left one at a time. Yeah. You know. Do you have any advice on, um, for the husband and wife, the mom and dad, what they can do to work better as a team? Well, just be on the same page. Try to get on the same page. You know, you're always going to have disagreements, but it doesn't have to be my way or the highway. You know, it doesn't have to be that way. You can always compromise, mm -hmm. you know. It, I mean, let's just use a curfew, for example. You know, the husband may say, oh, they can be out till midnight. And the mom's probably wanting them in at 9. Well, you know, go 10.30. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be my way or the highway, you know. A lot of husbands, I'm sure, are probably very hardcore about what time their children um, can stay out till and then the mom is more on the worried side of things that oh my gosh something's gonna happen to our child and mm -hmm. so I mean you've got to compromise you've got to compromise well, on your parenting skills and how do you compromise Communication. Key to your marriage. <laughs> Maybe I don't know Key what you know. To your marriage. Tell us in the comments. You know what stage of parenting you're in, um, and tell us where you're at. But yeah. at each stage, you you want to um, come together and communicate yep. and come up with goals. Now, the thing is, we didn't do this because we didn't know about this. I wish we, <laughs> I wish we had a channel like this that we could go to, and yeah. I could have gotten some advice. But yeah. I wish, what I wish, looking back, is that in each stage we had come together and said, you know, just okay, our children are now babies. You know, mm -hmm. this is what I want. Our, ch our children's life to be like and this and this is what he wants our children's life to be like these are some goals we have this is how I'd like to parent and mm -hmm. then when you get to the elementary school like okay now you got new challenges um, what's what are some important goals what are our values what um, do we want to say that this is something they can't cross the line and this is something we allow them to have a little more forgiveness in um, just talk about those things and maybe come up with some guidelines uh, when the next stage is junior high and then into high school um, sit down we never sat down and had those conversations about okay what do we think uh, should be their uh, their curfew what do we think mm -hmm. should be some rules about we kind of just took it one event at a time yeah. one problem at a time yeah I agree so sometimes I we agree. did have conversations like in the midst of it like well we're gonna have to talk your mom and dad are gonna have to talk because we don't know how to deal with this and then I would think be honest with your children especially when they're older um, the one thing I did with my kids is I treated them I, I never talked down to them even as toddlers um, I used big words and I used I talked to Cynthia and even Josh um, kind of like I would just a, an adult. So Cynthia developed some really big words. She actually, that's another funny story. She got us in trouble with some friends of ours. So I would use words like bad influence and um, I would use just bigger words because I didn't talk to her in baby talk. I talked to her just like she was an adult. I don't know why. Oh my gosh, I remember this. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we were hanging out with some friends of ours, and we'd go over every weekend and hang out. And they had a daughter about the same age. I think they, she might have been three, four, two. I don't know. Mm, we probably moved, three. Yeah, because we moved up here when she was four, so it had to be before that. So they're in a, in a bedroom playing, and we're trying to have dinner with her parents. And... Something their daughter did, she turned around and said, you are a bad influence. The little girl came, she didn't even know what it was, but she knew she got called a name. So she came running in while we were having dinner and said, Cynthia said I'm a bad influence and was bawling and basically it erupted and the parents thought that we had been talking about their daughter. Um, 
<laughs> not a good situation. We lost a friendship over Cynthia's big vocabulary. Yeah, not a good situation. <laughs> that was not good. But, that was one of our. <laughs> I mean, what what less what three-year-old what three-year-old knows um, bad influence? I mean, but, not many. <laughs> but I you maybe know. ours. <laughs> She just was oh, smart, boy. smarter than her age from the beginning. Yeah, she's smarter than a fifth grader. <laughs> so oh, anyway, boy. I don't know. Maybe you guys, um, some of you guys on this channel, your kids are growing up. You probably have some great advice uh, for others that are still in those stages. Um, yeah. If you are parents of high schoolers, you will have great advice for those in junior high. Uh, have kids in junior high and so on, um, elementary. Um, you guys have great advice for the next level below you. Let's all be a community and join in the in the comments and just help each other out. Help everybody, um, yeah. You know, if you have a question, maybe somebody um, in the comments can kind of help answer that. Like, yeah. what do I do about this? And you know, there's a whole new set of problems that we didn't have. Uh, we didn't have social media when our kids were growing up. Nope. That's a whole nother ball game. Uh, we wouldn't even know where to begin to give you advice on that. Um, yeah. But another yeah. parent might. Um, we didn't have cell phones um, back then. Mm -mm. So we wouldn't even know where to begin to give you that. We did get our kids cell phones when they started driving, right? But they yeah. were like the flip phones. They were the little junky <laughs> junkie phones exactly yeah. so you know just join in with this community and let's share great advice with each other mm -hmm. and um, maybe you've got a funny story about your kids we'd love to hear that yeah too. throw it in the comments <laughs> and yeah. kids if you're watching this someday and we're gone we love you very much and we had the best time raising you it was a little frustrating at moments but now we look back and well, love every not? moment <laughs> when is it not you're always going to have those frustrating moments but the good times way way outweighed the bad so yeah and i'm sure they can tell some stories on us because oh i'm sure remember when you're a kid your parents are also growing up and learning how to do things you know you, yeah. you don't think about when you were a kid your parents were pretty much kids yeah. You know, they were, if they were in their 20s or something like that, or even their 30s, yeah. they're learning and growing, and everybody's yeah. learning and growing. So have grace and forgiveness. Yeah, a little mercy <laughs> goes a long way. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, that's all I have. Do you have yep. anything else? Nope. I think we covered the the whole, <laughs> the whole gamut. genre of everything, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And possibly embarrassed our children. They'll live. It'll be okay. <laughs> anyway. Till next time, guys, this is Jay Krista, helping you say I do forever and helping you parent. Love you guys. See you guys. <laughs>